Welcome to the Prepare for Grad School webinar. This event is intended for international graduate students starting their graduate studies at McMaster University in the winter 2023 term. My name is Yufei and I am the International Graduate Student Coordinator at the School of Graduate Studies. I would like to uh, acknowledge the land that McMaster University sits on. So uh, as our land acknowledgement states, uh, McMaster University recognizes and acknowledges that it's located on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. As international students, I encourage you when you arrive in Canada to explore this cultural aspect of the land that we sit on and, um, and learn more about our Indigenous histories and Indigenous present and our Indigenous communities. In today's presentation, we will talk about the School of Graduate Studies, uh, resources and services that's available to all international graduate students, uh, things to think about when you're traveling to McMaster, and of course, a Q&A section at the end. There will be a lot of links and, um, and resources shared in this presentation, and these links are available as part of this presentation. So first, let's get started with the School of Graduate Studies. So as you can see on the screen, this is um, the building that the School of Graduate Studies sits in. So we're located on the second floor of Gilmore Hall. Some of the things that the School of Graduate Studies does is mostly the central administration and resources for all faculties. So this includes um, overseeing the admissions and graduation processes, uh, facilitating PhD defenses, hosting, uh, housing the rules and regulations and graduate policies that are relevant to all graduate students. We also have scholarships and awards teams and the grad pay increase team, as well as the graduate student resources team. We are located on the second floor of Gilmore Hall, room GH212, and um, this is what our kind of front of the office look like. So if you, you need to go to grad studies um, to uh, see our office staff or to complete any tasks, this is the office that you will be looking for. And we know that many of the students here today are not in uh, Canada yet, but you're more than welcome to reach out to us through a live chat that exists anywhere on our uh, website or email askgrad at mcmaster.ca. So some of the issues that you may email us about or contact us about is issues with um, that are associated with technical issues like um, not being able to enroll when you're eligible to enroll, um, uploading your photo ID, photo ID pictures, retrieving online letters from Mosaic. And we also take requests to update your records. So we expect, for example, if you recently had a name change, a citizenship change, or a location change, we're also able to help you with updating this information. And also to provide information on things like uh, leaves of absences, withdrawals, transferring programs. So if you ever have a question about general grad studies processes, you're more than welcome to visit us. Other program questions that may be program specific. So for example, uh, requirements for your degree, uh, which courses to take, how to start your co-op and uh, funding for your specific program should be directly uh, asked to your program because grad studies won't have program specific information such as this. One of the things we can help you with is getting paid. So as a graduate student, you may receive payments in two ways. One of them is for employment. So if you have a TA, so teaching assistant, uh, assistant position or research assistant uh, position as an RA, uh, you will be receiving your payment deposited directly into your Canadian bank account. And this is set up through forms with the uh, human resources department. 
like if you're receiving other kinds of payments through scholarships or awards, they will be sent to you via email uh, as an Interact e-transfer, which then you can click the email and following instructions to deposit that fund into your um, bank account. If you have questions about getting paid, please feel free to contact our grad pay department. And if you have questions about scholarships and award, you can contact our graduate scholarships team. For international students, you may not be familiar with the conditions for you to work in Canada. So in order to work in Canada, so this includes teaching assistant positions and research assistant positions, you must have a social insurance number, or someone may call it the SIN. A uh, social insurance number is something that you will get with um, the ser uh, Service Canada, so that's a government department. And you will also need a Canadian bank account. So both the social insurance number and the Canadian bank account is something that you will need to get after you arrive in Canada because they may be uh, asked you to see your study permit, which you get after you arrive in Canada and approve of Canadian address. The condition of your work allowance will be printed on your study permit uh, that you will receive at the border. So when you receive your study permit, make sure that you check that the study permit allows you to work in Canada. For all graduate students at McMaster University, there's a limit of up to an average of 20 hours per week of on-campus employment. So if you have a TA job and you're thinking of other forms of on-campus on employment, make sure that you keep track of your hours. If you have any questions about working in Canada as an international student from an immigration perspective, please make sure to contact our immigration advising team at immigration at mcmaster.ca. Getting your social insurance number is very important for you to work in Canada. And to support our students, we have invited staff members from Service Canada to be on campus for some of the days to help students get their social insurance numbers. So appointments are available in uh, mid to late December and, and early January. And if you're starting your program in January, you will likely arrive in December or January. And I highly encourage you to book one of these appointments. Each appointment usually take about 10 minutes. Um, you make sure that you bring all the documents they require you to bring. And, um, and this is the by far the most convenient and the fastest way to get your social insurance number. Alternatively, you can apply for your social insurance number online. It takes more than 10 minutes and uh, it will take some time for you to hear back. There's also an option for you to apply in person and we do not recommend this. I'm sorry, there's also a option for you to apply through the mail and we do not recommend the mailing option as it takes significantly more time and they require you to uh, mail in your official documents. So we encourage you to take advantage of the appointments on campus to get your social insurance number. If you cannot uh, attend any one of these sessions, you may consider applying for it online. As part of the school graduates school of graduate studies, we have the student resources team. So the student resources team organizes events and share helpful resources for all graduate students, including uh, events like the webinar we're in today. Some of the topics that we provide resources and support for is uh, resources around supervisory relationship academic resources, health and wellness and community resources, and of course, um, events, initiatives, and resources that helps you with your professional development. One of the resources that are most relevant to you today would be the new Graduate Student Orientation Hub. We have this hub specifically built for each of the group of students arriving at different terms, and, for, and the Winter 2023 Hub is currently available. So this hub contains specific step-by-step -step instructions for our new students starting in January, resources, online activities, and events to help you navigate your graduate journey. Some of those things that may be very helpful to you right now may be the, or, uh, the recorded webinar orientation library. So 
you may find recordings of past events in that hub. Another initiative from Grad Studies I highly encourage you to take advantage of is the International Grad Navigators Program. So through this program, you will be all the new students who signed up for the program will be matched with the current students who uh, with a similar, a similar cultural background. Um, it's where the current students may reach out to you and provide support on a one by one, one on one basis. This connection may be really help be really helpful for you to prepare for your arrival and for you to get through the first term of um, your studies at McMaster because the student who's helping you has been there, done that, and they will be able to provide cultural relevant support. Of course, uh, I also recommend for you to keep up to date with the communications sent from Grad Studies. Um, you found out about this webinar through the uh, the information for our incoming graduate students newsletter, and I I encourage you to continue to monitor this newsletter for new updates, informations, and events. When you become uh, a current student, you will start receiving the weekly. So the weekly is a weekly newsletter from grad studies to all graduate students with updates, uh, events, reminders, and important information for all graduate students at McMaster. As a reminder, here are some of your next steps. Uh, if you're able to do so, please make sure to activate your Mac ID and McMaster email. Upload your photo for your student card as soon as possible, and make sure all the information on Mosaic is up to date. There are some, some key dates to keep in mind. So November 24th to December 8th is our on-time registration. At that time, if you're eligible to register, please make sure that you register and so it doesn't incur late registration fees. January 25th is our tuition deadline. So the tuition deadline is after the first day of school likely. So you will be able to pay your tuition after you arrive in Canada. January 31st is a deadline to complete SGS 101 and 201. And SGS 101 and 201 are mandatory courses for all graduate students. Finally, if you have any questions, these are some of the areas you may go to. If you have questions about condition clearing, course enrollment, program requirement, and your TA assignment, make sure to direct these questions to your program directly. If you have questions about um, general graduate studies processes, policies, technical issues, make sure to ask direct these questions to grad studies. And if you're really not sure where to go or just require one-on-one -on -one advice on um, a number of things, or you have questions about traveling to McMaster, you're more than welcome to email me. Next, I will talk about resources and services that's available for all graduate students. The first department I would like to highlight is our International Student Services Department. So this uh, service area is available to all international students at McMaster. So that includes undergraduate students and exchange students. The services they offer includes immigration and mobility advising, health insurance, so you may know this as UHIP, student success coaching, and they also organize events and activities that all um, international students are welcome. You may book appointments with, with any of the ISS staff on Oscar Plus, and you can visit their website for more information. So on the slide, it contains a picture of four people you would like to likely to encounter more regularly than others. So there are Anna Pereira. So Anna will likely be answering a lot of your YouTube questions or to share information about upcoming events. Andrew Stables, he provides one-on-one -on -one student success coaching. And as well as uh, Carissa Hu and Luji Samulu, they are our immigration and mobility advisors. So you, you might have already met one or both of them during our study, uh, applying for study permit events, and they're also there for one-on-one -on -one immigration consultation. So briefly, international, all international students 
are uh, enrolled in the UHIP plan every year. And it's also mandatory for your dependents, for example, your spouse and your children to enroll in this plan as well. So please make sure to contact UHIP at McMaster.ca to add them to your plan. Grad students may also be covered uh, by supplementary coverages through the Graduate Student Association's Health and Dental Plan. And also, if you're a TA or RA, you are also covered under the QP Union's Benefits and Plans. We are hosting an event about accessing healthcare in Canada on December 1st, where we will talk about how to access healthcare and uh, learn more about what these plans cover. So I highly encourage you to attend this that event. There are also com some community resources that, that are available to um, international students. So there are a number of student clubs governed by the Graduate Student Association. And these clubs are student-led and they can be based on culture, uh, for, based on program, or based on your special interests. We also have a International Graduate Student Association uh, that is operated by international students and for international graduate students. So they also um, facilitate event and advocacy for international graduate students, so the specific group. There's also very helpful information from the city of Hamilton uh, with information and resources for new Hamiltonians. So for example, if you're arriving in Hamilton with your family, especially with children, the, the city of Hamilton website provides really great resources about how to access uh, school, how to access other community services that are relevant to you. At McMaster, we also have a free uh, we have free English language learning services. So they are delivered through MODEL, which stands for McMaster Office for the Development of English Language Learners. MODEL offers free services that you may access uh, as a McMaster student. Um, so these services include lessons, workshops, and support to help you improve your English proficiency. And they also offer one-on-one -on -one help and assessment to help your in, to address your individual needs. One of the very important things that we recommend for you to look into and access before you start school is student accessibility services. This means that if you have a disability and would like to set up academic accommodations, um, the, uh, and SAS, so Student Accessibility Services Coordinator, will be able to support you in the process. And we highly encourage you to get this process started before academic work begins. If you are going to be a teaching assistant or if you're going to be uh, working on campus, the accommodations at the workplace is set up through human resources. So make sure to um, request the accommodations through human resources. And make, uh, all these information with more details are available on our grad disability and accommodations page. There are also help and wellness uh, services available. So the Student Wellness Center provides support uh, for mental wellness and mental health. They also provide counseling, medical services, and wellness programs. So that can sometimes be group events and programming. There's also a graduate wellness newsletter that's made by graduate students for graduate students. And they also have events and gatherings for students as well. And we encourage you to sign up for this wellness newsletter. There's also an organization on campus called Open Circle. So Open Circle McMaster is a diverse and consensus-based community where McMaster students can gather to discuss their life, spiritual, and societal needs and issues, as well as find volunteering opportunities through the community. And this is a very uh, holistic uh, area at um, organization at McMaster that I really encourage you to explore and participate with to find community. At McMaster, we also value equity, diversity, and inclusion, and we have an equity and inclusion office. So the equity and inclusion office 
Their role is to promote and to support institution-wide commitment to the values of equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility. So some of the things that they oversee are human rights and dispute resolutions, uh, inclusion and anti-racism education. They also have accessibility programs. Um, they also govern the sexual violence prevention and response uh, policies and McMaster's equity and inclusion policies. So that includes accessibility policies, discrimination and harassment policies, and of course, the sexual violence policy. Um, you're welcome to access all these resources through their office and reach out to them if you encounter any issues, challenges, or if you require some uh, equity diversity consultation. We also have scholarly writing support. Uh, all these support and more are listed on our community resources page. So for example, we have a writing center that's open for one-on-one -on -one appointments. And, uh, and we have uh, a staff member that specializes in graduate level writing. There's also virtual grad writing boot camps where we can get together with other students and work together to uh, create an environment where you can write and reflect on your writing effectively. There's also online resources available. So for example, there's a thesis writer's toolkit and there are uh, video resources that introduces you to graduate level writing and online modules. As a graduate student, libraries um, are your best friends. And libraries, uh, the, the skills that you use to access libraries and do effective research is very important. So uh, I would really like to highlight this resource because librarians are really your friends. And we have graduate level librarians and faculty specific librarians to help you with your research consultation and with your citation management. There's also a room dedicated to grad and postdoc studies and in the Mills Library and also specialized research and innovation centers that may be able to help, help you through very specific uh, and, and innovative needs, and these are some of the offices you may explore. So, for example, there are more than three, but for example, we have the Sherman Center for Digital Humanities, uh, the Data Analyst Analysis Support Hub called DASH, and the Leon Center for New Media. There are so many resources and opportunities offered through our libraries. We highly, highly encourage you to link, look into what they have to offer and access them uh, as much as possible. There is a library remote support hub that you may access right now before arriving in Canada. We also have specifically support for teaching and learning. So this slide is mostly relevant to folks with teaching assistants or research assistant roles. We have an area department called McPherson uh, Institute for Leadership, Innovation and Excellence in Teaching. So what this um, department does is they provide resources for TAs uh, that includes classroom instructional skills, teaching and learning certificate programs, training workshops, and they also send out weekly updates. All the TAs and RAs also belongs to a labor union called QP3906. And they're the union that's independent from the university and they're protected and you're protected under their collective agreement with the university. They also have health plan, uh, advocacy for TAs and uh, folks within the union and they have an international officer. life in Canada, finances are very important and we do have support areas that supports that will help you with your financial planning. So the first area I would like to direct you to is Max Money Center. So what this center does is they provide one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, for you to meet with an accredited money coach to uh, create a budget, to, um, to spend your money smartly, and to help you with your kind of financial uh, questions and needs. The Max, Max Money Center also deliver workshops um, that help students. So it's 
that includes budgeting workshops. And when tax season comes, they also have support for you to file taxes and understand the, the Canadian tax system. If you encounter an emergency uh, that is out of your control and unexpected that puts you in financial need, we also have an emergency financial support fund through the registrar's office, and you can access it at any point in your graduate studies career uh, if something unexpected comes up. The Graduate Student Association also offers grants and bursaries for students in need. Next, I would like to highlight some of the um, specialized campus communities and support um, that are for specific groups of students. So the first one is the Indigenous Student Services. So back in during the land acknowledgement, um, we do take um, our Indigenous heritage and indis Indigenous um, Indigenous roots or Indigenous lands and uh, and what it stands for very seriously. And we have an office that specifically uh, is built to support Indigenous students. And they also deliver workshops and events in collaboration with other departments to share ideas and to help students learn more about the Indigenous culture. We have a Black Student Success Center, and that is for students, uh, with Black students who are Black or and with African heritage, to um, to get specialized and culturally relevant support. We also have a spiritual care and learning center for students who uh, have strong spiritual and um, multi faith associations. We also have resources for grad parents. So that's for students who are also parents. Uh, we recognize juggling both being a graduate student and parents could be a very challenging experience. And we do have um, supports. We do recognize this group and support, have supports available for them to connect. Finally, I've shared a lot of information and all of this information can be found on our graduate community resources page. So after you arriving in, um, in Canada or at the university, I highly encourage you to access this page and bookmark this page because it describes, um, it contains the resources and information that help you throughout your graduate journey and all the resources we shared today and more even more resources are available on this page. So in the next and the final section, I will talk a bit about uh, traveling to McMaster, including some tips for preparing for your travels and what you can do after you arrive. So preparing for your arrivals, this information is accurate as of um, November 10th, 2022. Um, if for the students who arrived in the fall, the slide was a bit different. And for the students who arrived uh, last year, the slide's very different. And if you're arriving in the future term, I recommend uh, going to the orientation event for that term because this may or may no longer be accurate. As of today, to our understanding, uh, the Canada travel policy has much uh, reverted back to before the pandemic. So this means you are not required to take a COVID-19 test before you board the plane. You're not required to show your proof of vaccination and there is no quarantine in place after you arrive. So, um, so pandemic measures are um, no longer in place as of today, as, not, uh, as of information available today. Students usually arrive about two to four weeks before the start of their program, especially international students. So this gives everyone enough time to settle down, get used to life in Canada, get your bank account information, get your social insurance number, um, furnish your housing, furnish your room, and get ready for school. The absolutely latest time you should plan to arrive is um, a day before your program require you to be on campus to start your program. So if you're not sure when that day is, please make sure to reach out to your program directly. When before you board the plane, make sure to have these documents with, with you. So of course, your valid passport or travel document, 
your offer letter from the university confirming that you will be a student. And of course, your letter of introduction indicating that your study permit was approved by the IRCC, by the Canadian government, or if you already have one, your valid study permit. The government also require you to have to bring financial proof that you have enough funds to support yourself during your stay in Canada. And depending on your country of citizenship, you will also need either a ETA or a TRV to travel. And during the application process, if there are other documents that the Canadian government asks you to bring with you, please make sure to bring with you. Uh, then this can be varied from person to person. We have created an international grad students traveling to McMaster page for all for the latest information that are relevant to international graduate students traveling to Canada, including information about how to get to Hamilton from the Toronto Pearson Airport. And I highly encourage you to bookmark this page before you travel to Canada. What to pack? So the information in this slide are gathered from student feedback and things that they wish they'd known before they arrived in Canada. So some of the common items may be power adapters. So depending on which country you're coming from uh, and how much electronics you're bringing from your home country, you may consider bringing a power adapter just to make sure you can still use them when you're in Canada. Make sure to bring at least a month worth of personal medication and notes from your doctor if you're taking regular medication or subscription, uh, prescriptions, um, just because it may take some time for you to access the Canadian healthcare system and get those prescriptions refilled. You can also consider bringing some non-perishable snacks that reminds you of home uh, or the snacks that you cannot access here uh, just so to have uh, to have a treat for yourself and to have something that kind of helps you um, get through the hard Canadian winter. And of course, make copies of your official documents and emergency contact, just in case if you lose any of your documents, uh, you need to show proof of who you are or encounter a situation that you may not be expecting. Some of the things that may uh, help with your decisions to what to bring may be, you know, the prices of items in your home country and in Canada. So for big brand items like um, your common brands like Nike, or uh, other international brands that exist in a lot of countries, compare the prices online of what they're like in your home country versus in Canada, because sometimes it may be even cheaper for you to buy the items here in Canada. And of course, the climate in your home country comparing to Canada, because if the climate is very, very different from your home country, so for example, if you don't get winters like Canada in your home country, your home country may not sell jackets or winter gear that is sufficient for Canada. So this is something really important to consider. As this group of students, um, so the students starting in winter 2023 is coming in during the winter, uh, we really want to kind of highlight some of the things uh, to be mindful of during the winter, uh, just so you're prepared. So if you do not have already have a winter jacket, we highly recommend for you to get one in Canada. So as mentioned earlier, if you're coming from a place with the climate that's not like Canada, then they, you might not even have access to getting a, a sufficient winter jacket. Temperature in the winter is usually below 10 degrees Celsius, possibly below minus 20 degrees Celsius on some days. So it does get some very cold. And the days in the winter can be very short. So the shortest day of the year can be uh, can go as low as nine hours of sunlight in the year. So this is something that sometimes may surprise students who's not used to this um, kind of spending the year in this part of the world. Um, so Hamilton do have four seasons. So we have a spring, a summer, a winter, uh, a fall and a winter. And this temperatures in each of the seasons and how you feel in each of the seasons can be very different. So don't throw away your summer clothes yet because our summers can be quite warm going above 30 degrees Celsius and the days gets longer in the summer as well. So some of our longest days can get up to 14 hours of sunlight, which you can see is a very significant five hour difference comparing to the winter. 
some of the things we uh, share with students during our preparing for winter events, including, of course, things like what to wear, what 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 do people actually wear? And uh, the picture on the screen right now is actually found in McMaster's Canada Stock Photo Database. There are actual students on campus in the winter. And I think this picture sh shows really well what students re really generally are like, are what students dress like in the winter. So as you can see from the two students in the picture, they're covered mostly from head to toe. Something that covers their head, something that covers their neck, covers their hand, and of course, boots that are likely waterproof. And um, and in general, if you dress something like this, you will be fine. You don't need a whole body snowsuit or you don't need to go um, beyond uh, a good durable winter jacket that's hopefully preferably water repellent or waterproof and winter boots that also preferably waterproof. We sometimes get questions from students about snow pants. And I will say, unless you're going to be outside for a very long extended of time, or if you're doing a winter sport, like going to ski, skiing or snowboarding, you really don't need ski pants. And as you can see um, in the picture, both of our students, um, although they have really big jackets on, uh, they're, they're not wearing like thick, heavy uh, snow pants. This is because it could get very, very warm inside. So as long as it's indoor space, that can be uh, classrooms, shopping centers, restaurants, businesses, you can expect it to be very warm. So as you can see from this picture, all of our students now have their jacket on the chair, and some of them are even wearing short sleeve shirts. And because of this, most we anticipate in the winter that most of the times you spend will be indoors, you know, in the school, in the shopping center, and it could get extremely warm. And this is also why we recommend water resistant shoes, because when you're outside walking around and get snow on your boots, uh, they will melt very fast when you're inside and you don't want your shoes or any or your clothes to be too wet when you're walking around and staying inside the whole time. And of course, we recognize that when you come into Canada, you will be spending a lot of money to get your life started, to get your winter jacket, uh, to pay the deposit on your first rental apartment or first rental housing. And we have an event coming up uh, called Managing Your Money in Grad School, where a staff member from Max Money Center will be here to talk about what our finance is like in Canada. So for example, what's the cost of a living like in Canada? Uh, how to create a um, workable budget. So exploring the money you'll be getting from your funding, from your scholarships and, um, and other sources of income and how you can spend them effectively. And they will also share information about other community resources. And after that event, we will have our Healthcare in Canada event where you can learn about the, how to access the healthcare system, uh, the resources available on campus, and also the insurance you have uh, available. So I highly encourage uh, for you to attend these two events as very important information you might want to know um, to live in Hamilton for the next uh, year or so or longer. Yeah. These are some of the things that you may consider doing uh, after you have arrived. So these uh, includes, of course, we mentioned earlier, getting your social insurance number, updating your address on Mosaic so you can receive um, paper communications from the university in a timely manner. Get a Canadian bank account so you can deposit your scholarships and your TA earnings. Get your bus pass um, through the Graduate Student Association. And optionally, if you don't want to carry your passport around just to, you know, buy alcohol um, or to show your identity, you can consider getting a Ontario driver's license. You prefer to drive in Canada or get an Ontario photo card. So that's essentially just an identity card for folks who uh, choose not to get a driver's license. 
and I encourage you to take a walk on campus. We have some beautiful uh, green or beautiful forested areas in the winter and they are still accessible and you're more than welcome to take a walk around campus. We also have a nature at Mac group who may take you around to different areas of the city for uh, hikes and walks and just time spent in the nature. One thing you might want to note is that if you're arriving during the holiday period, so that's December 24th to January 2nd, some offices and stores may be closed or may be operating in limited hours. So for example, the university is closed during this time. None of the staff members will be working. So you won't be able to reach anyone through email or by coming to campus. Um, some of the government offices may operate the same way. Um, some stores may be closed on December 25th or January 1st, but between those dates, most of the stores or grocery stores and clothing stores and shopping areas are open. Uh, one of the biggest shopping holidays in Canada is Boxing Day, and it is on December 26th, and uh, where all the stores will be open and there's a lot of people shopping. So don't worry about getting the necessities during this time period. Okay, so we wrap. I recognize that there's a lot of information shared in the past uh, 40 something minutes in the past session. And of course, you're not obligated to remember, memorize, or keep track even any of that. There are just a few uh, simple things as next, next steps that I encourage you to do. So the first one is, of course, sign up for the orientation events that we mentioned earlier and the ones that will be shared in the future. Connect with the International Grad Navigator by signing up to the International Grad Navigator program. And of course, review uh, our recorded webinars through our recorded, uh, recorded orientation webinars library in case you missed any of the past events. So this concludes the presentation portion of this uh, orientation event. Um, and I hope the information we shared is helpful. If you have any questions about any of the information shared today, you're more than welcome to contact me at my email. And we're looking forward to seeing you at McMaster very soon. Have a great day, everyone.